Hey guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I have not been doing this for about four years so I'm very excited to actually be back and uh, try something new. Uh, what we're going to do today is plain and simple, a day in life of a wildlife photographer. I'm going to show you what I'm doing in the field in order to actually photograph the animals that I do and because I hate doing this outside of my rooms and because these guitars in the background don't have anything to do with what I do on this YouTube channel, um, we're going to switch right to location where I'm going to show you what I'm all about. Uh, so see you there in a second. quick change of plans actually um, because as a place that I wanted to drive my car into and actually park it there um, I hope it's a new road sign uh, which doesn't allow me to to go there anymore uh, because if it isn't I've been driving there for four years illegally but I think it just is what it is right now uh, it's just 500 meters for, from where I am right now um, I just want to give you a quick context of what I'm doing actually and who I am also uh, because most of you most likely will not know me so really quickly hey uh, my name is Neil I'm a 21 year old wildlife and nature photographer based in Germany and right now I'm in my home state uh, North Rhine uh, Westphalia um, actually and I'm, I think I'm being watched I guess it, yeah, I, I, I just have to deal with it. And um, right now uh, the weather is beautiful, but it is changing every five minutes. So it might be raining in, in about five minutes. I don't know right now. And I hope the dead cat is doing a good job as blocking the wind uh, because it is quite windy. Um, but I just want to show you what I've actually taken on this trip today and also uh, where I am. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I just quickly want to show you where I am right now and also what the issue is here in, in, in the state that I'm in when it comes to wildlife photography. So everything that you see here is, you know, these all these fields um, going all the way here uh, is used by agriculture and also, you know, if I just turn around, if you look actually above this, there's just more fields with agricultural uh, used by agriculture and um, the main issue is like we only have these tiny pieces of forest left along the side of what is normally used uh, and that's exactly where I am going to search for wildlife because that's pretty much all we have left here. Um, what I'm searching here for is uh, badgers uh, and also foxes because I know that they are two active dens. I just am not sure how active they still are. Um, I also know that we have wild boar and deer, uh, roe deer here in the forest, but they're heavily hunted. A deer season started uh, on the 1st of May, it's the 3rd of May right now. And on uh, and wild boar is hunted all year through, so chances of seeing them is, is, is small, but not zero. So it's just, um, we will see what I will come up with today, but today is actually just showing you what I do in preparation of, uh, of the pictures that I normally take. And also I want to quickly show you what I took with me on this trip. So I already opened this up, just extra protection for the big boy. Um, so what I have with me is a Canon EOS R, which I switched to from a 1DX recently. Uh, and I'm actually really happy because this is silent which is amazing uh, a 1635 that i normally always carry in my bag and my big boy 300 f 2.8 mark ii from canon uh, which is my favorite absolute favorite lens from canon and that's normally uh, what i do take on small trips like this and also you know tripod wise gets a tripod i think it's a 1325 mountaineering edition and you know just a smaller tripod, a stool, everything that I need in the field and straps for the trail cameras that I brought to be able to monitor the area. So uh, just to give you a little bit more background about the area that I am right now, uh, I'm still able to, to talk quite loudly as I don't expect to see much. Uh, so on my left side, what you see here is actually something called the nature protection zone, uh, which is not be, uh, allowed to be touched in any kind of way. You're also not allowed to um, go off trail there because um, it is crucial to to keep that healthy as it is uh, most of that is actually a swamp which is important for our ecosystem and also the biodiversity here in the area and um, just a funny fact about swamps so uh, a nickname that I actually uh, got from a Canadian uh, during my time in Canada is uh, for moose they call them swamp donkeys because they kind of look like donkeys just a little bit weird and uh, just a little bit bigger and they hang around a lot in swamps so uh, I think it's just a very fitting nickname so if you are if you want to adapt to it you are welcome to do so um, and yeah so 
the area that I go into, uh, the right side, uh, right hand side, um, is open to the public, and we have certain laws that allow me to go in there. I still have to be uh, cautious about the areas that I enter, simply because I don't want to disturb uh, any of the animals. And on the other hand, I don't want to get shot by the hunter. That's why I actually carry a quite bright backpack, so they are able to tell me apart from any animals running around. Boy, that backpack is heavy. Man, let's see how much longer I can do this. And actually vlogging is very new to me. As I've said, I've not been doing it for four years, so let's see if I actually keep going. <sighs> All right, see, see you in a couple of seconds to, 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 to show you where I'm going. So I've actually uh, just arrived at the trail that I want to go into and uh, just to give you a little bit more background on uh, why it is so difficult to actually uh, photograph wildlife here in the area ethically. It is because, uh, you know, as I've shown you and you probably can't really see it on, on video, but it is simply a reality here in the state. Uh, is we only have really small pieces of, uh, of forest left for these animals to go into and also, uh, actually hide from humans. And as a wildlife photographer, I have to be a little bit uh, selfish um, and also I am I'm a little bit selfish when I go into these places because I have to know that um, I will disturb some of these animals in some kind of way and have a certain impact on them. Uh, so for me every time I go into small pieces of forest like this where I know there's a lot of animals uh, flying around and also running around here. Uh, what I have to evaluate is actually uh, does the impact that I have on the animals is worth uh, getting the shot that I want to and uh, do I disturb them in the way where they actually could feel unsafe. So that's something that I have to deal with every single time I go in the forest here which I didn't have to deal with as much uh, during my time in Canada uh, but that's just one of the difficult things that I have to do every time I go photograph wildlife. I just have to make that evaluation. Hey, is it actually worth going in there and disturb the animals or should I just leave them alone so I will be able to uh, I have to be a little bit more quiet once I enter um, and I hope you will be still able to understand me and if I uh, and I hope I can talk to you uh, while doing the stuff that I'm doing so uh, we will see about that but I will just enter the place that I want to go into and we will see us there Moving on, you know, there are a lot around here. So 
coats our whole system right on this small hill. So, we had another hole here, which is completely full. And this one too. Let me see. As you can see, it's very, very busy inside. So, the chances of this being an active den is very, very small. Alright, and as you can see, it's like it's a whole system. It's not just one den or two. There are a couple of holes here. We have one here, one here, one down here, and more along the way. Right here is another one which you barely can see. So, and you can see a little bit of this one. So it's a whole system that has been uh, uh, that has been worked on by the better, where foxes and badgers can technically survive in. And we move in prime habitat, you know, it's all these hills up and down. This is where you want to search. What we are looking for, I will show you. So, you can barely see it because of the sunlight. But, so, right here, there's a lot of sand and mud just unnaturally outside of what this hill should look like. So that's exactly what we are going to check out. This tent that I found doesn't show much activity as well. So it most likely has not been used in the past year, if not past two years. But the one that I found is this one. This is actually perfect. This is exactly what we're searching for. All this mud, sand, and everything that's inside is very, very new. Everything around it has been cleaned up perfectly by the badger. And it will just take a step down trying to be quiet and not disturb it if we take a look inside this is very very tidy not much inside so exactly what we're trying to search for when it comes to finding badgers and foxes this is just perfect and this is where I'm going to hang my first trail camera you see here uh, it must have fallen in the past two days that's how strong the winds and the, the weather were just a couple of days ago I could just walk straight along here but not anymore good thing that I was not in the forest just on the other side from where I've been this is where the trail is leading and from here is actually where I saw two other holes and you can barely see them. This is what you have to pay attention to. Just to move a little bit further. Let's see. There you go. Right here, two holes. And you don't see much in front of it. So, this is where I'm going to go down and I'll probably put another camera. This is exactly what I mean. You can barely see them from the trail. But don't you think this kind of looks like a, a face? You know, eye, eye, nose, probably somewhere here would be the mouth. But yeah, this is the other one that I found that looks very promising. And the other thing is if you pay enough attention, you will be able to tell that there's a, a very small trail leading up here, right here. 
and this is most likely where the badgers are walking uh, along uh, more than once and that's what they're using to, to get out of this little uh, or up this little hill so it looks very active most likely used by other animals too if we take a look in here you can see right here there's barely anything in front or inside this hole a little more on this side so this one is actually the one that we are going to check out i'm not quite sure how i'm going to do it i definitely have to do it from up uh from up there somehow here most likely along the trail that i just showed you um because there's literally nothing right in front where i can put the camera okay so uh, the second camera is up can barely see it but it's all the way here you can kind of tell it's on this tree but it is actually on the complete opposite side of the dent that are right here um, and also there the camera is on a height that um, probably um, most of the animals here will not be able to reach um, because um, you know as humans we obviously leave a scent in the area but uh, the, if you just walk through it it is just very briefly but if you leave something in the area um, and animals are able to smell it they will be able to detect uh, kind of you know there's, there's there's a human for for a couple of days here so we, we probably get moving and uh, go to another place so that's what you do you know if you don't have any other options it's really really good to hang it up high and also in a kind of hidden spot so animals can't reach it and also other humans will not steal it okay so i've put put up both cameras that i wanted i had a third one with me if i find another one but i think two should should be good for now and uh, that's pretty much it for today what i quickly want to do now is actually talk about the mistakes that i've been doing and and the friend that i go photograph with we've been doing together in the beginning of our trail camera uh, journey because you know there are quite a few mistakes that you can do and actually scare away the animals that you want to photograph and uh, I want you to learn from my mistakes and just tell you what not to do you know that something that I think people don't talk enough about is actually what type of mistakes have we done so other people don't have to do them um, because you know in the end the most important thing is that we don't disturb the animals in a way where they're going to leave the area and that's exactly what we unfortunately did in uh, for one of the fox tents that we found uh, here so uh, when we started to photograph or trying to, to, to find foxes uh, we found a very very active den with a lot of bones around and in the holes so there definitely was a fox family in there but what we did is actually we put the trail camera too close to the den and also way too low so the fox could actually smell uh, that we've been in the area and uh, you know human scent is going to stay on uh, one of these trail cameras for the, for the animals for a couple of days it's not not gone in, in, in a couple of hours like it is when I just walk through here so uh, most likely what happened we are not quite sure is the fox was able to smell hey there are humans around you know kind of 24 7 throughout the night uh, we have to get going it's unsafe here um, and that's exactly what they did you know we didn't see any foxes in that den uh, we were not, not able to detect any activity and um, when it comes to trail cameras that's exactly something that you should try to avoid you know uh, hang it in an appropriate distance from the den that you're trying to monitor and also in an appropriate high where uh, hide where they're not able to actually um, see that or smell that camera uh, and you should be good to go so just one of the mistakes that we've been doing uh, or we have done in the beginning and now we are much smarter than we've been just a couple of months ago and therefore you know learn from my mistakes